But St. Mark chapter 9, verse 14, amen. If you have it, say amen. amen. And, and when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them, and the scribes questioning them. Straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed, running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribe, what, what question ye with them? One of the multitude answered, said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son, which hath a dumb spirit. Whatsoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth and gnasheth with his teeth and pineth away. I spake to thy disciples, but they could not cast him out, and they could not. And he answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. They brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground, and wallowed and foaming. And he asked his father, how long is it ago since this came upon him? And he said, of a child. Oft times he's cast into fire and into water to destroy him, but if thou can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. And Jesus said unto him, if thou can believe. All things are possible to him that believe. Straightway the father of the crowd, the child cried and said, With tears, Lord, I believe, but help thou my unbelief. God bless you. You can be seated in the glorious presence of the Lord. I want to use for our thought, it's got to get better. <clears throat> you know, perhaps in these in this day and age, uh, this type of message is not uh, very popular because people don't preach about from the Gospels in the way that they should anymore. Uh, most preachers and teachers now have uh, kind of geared toward uh, topical preaching and just focusing only on a certain topic or a certain theme. Uh, but I find this, this story in Mark chapter 9 very interesting because it not only is uh, a true story uh, dealing with a person uh, and their dilemma and their struggle and their complications uh, and, and the real, real life where real life actually meets faith. Uh, each of us uh, at some point in time are going to uh, have to come to the reality uh, that we're still in a real life. This is still a journey, that, that, that life is not done uh, just one time, that you just fix everything overnight. It is a journey. It is a struggle. Uh, it is a, a pathway uh, that you must learn to trust in God. And this man comes to, to Jesus. In fact, uh, he comes at a time after Jesus has transfigured himself uh, with three of his disciples, Peter, James, and John, on top of what we call the Mount of Transfiguration. This, this is on his way to the cross. This is on his way to be crucified. And we'll be talking about this more as we get to Easter. But on his way to the cross, uh, this transfiguration takes place on top of the mountain. But below, underneath this mountain, there is a person who is struggling with real life. He, he's got a problem. He's got a serious problem. Uh, he's got an issue, and he's, he's coming to where he thinks he can get some help. Uh, he's coming, looking, searching for Jesus. Uh, his condition had gotten bad. In fact, it had gone uh, from bad to worse. It, it was a tough situation uh, to be in. It, he, he was dealing with a child that had a problem that he couldn't solve. <laughs> He was dealing with his own flesh and blood, dealing with his own DNA, dealing with his own blood source, dealing with his own namesake. And he had tried to fix it himself. He had tried to deal with it on his own. He, he had tried to manage it. He had tried to, to put boundaries on it. But it kept getting bigger and growing outside of the boundaries. What do you do when what you have in front of you is not getting better but growing worse? What, what do you do when you try to manage and control 
uh, this situation, but it keeps exploding and coming out in places that you never suspected. It, it's, it's coming out, and others are beginning to see that you're not able to manage this mess. <laughs> Uh, he has a mess, he has a condition, he has a situation, uh, but it is also something very personal. This is not a problem that he can leave. It's not a problem that he can go and drop off somewhere. It's not, it's not a problem that he can leave on the job and just come see it tomorrow. It, this is something that, that lives with him. <laughs> uh, it's in the house. It has the same address. It, it, uh, it eats the same food, sleeps under the same roof. Uh, it, it, it says good morning to you. <laughs> it says good night to you. It watches the same television shows. It's drinking your liquid Kool-Aid and tea and it's hanging out with you and everywhere you go this thing, this problem, this issue is going with you. It is his son and he's looking for help and he comes looking for Jesus. He doesn't find Jesus and instead, uh, instead of finding the one who can help him, he, he, he runs into, uh, you know, those uh, disciples. Runs into nine disciples. Runs into not Jesus, but the followers of Jesus. Now, if you've been in church any length of time, uh, then you know that every now and then you could, you could depend on who you ask, <laughs> you can get different answers for the same question. It, depend on who you run into in the church, you, you, you'll see it was up or it was down. Depend on who you talk to, it was a good thing or it was a bad thing. Depend on uh, which one of the followers you run into, it was God moving or it was not the Lord at all. So uh, he, who knows what kind of response uh, he was going to get when he goes to these nine followers of Jesus. I've come to realize that sometimes church people just ain't where they supposed to be. Uh, yeah, I, I, I've come to realize that followers of Jesus ain't Jesus. Uh, that followers of Jesus uh, sometimes have their own agenda, have their own thing they really are concerned about. They're not really concerned about helping anybody. They're only concerned about helping themselves. And he comes to these disciples. Uh, there's a great multitude of people there. Uh, it's a problem. It's a personal problem, but now it's got to be handled in public. Have, have you ever went to somebody looking for some private counsel, private advice? You don't want everybody to know about this, but uh, the situation is dictated that it's more people there than you thought. <laughs> and here there is a multitude of people there are scribes there are pharisees there are the multitude and there's the disciples with their own agenda and jesus is not with them he has come looking for help come looking for the solution come looking for some relief coming looking for something to get better uh, looking for Jesus but instead he sees everybody but Jesus it's almost like this man came to church uh, looking for Jesus but he keeps encountering people that said they know Jesus that supposed to be close to Jesus that are followers of Jesus that are hanging around where Jesus should be uh, but, but they can't help him uh, you know, it, it, it's sad that this is a reality. Uh, who would you go to in the church if you really needed some help? Would you go to the multitude? We know they don't have no answer. We know the multitude can't, you know, that 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 crew, that, that, that multitude crew is the loose leaf folk that are just really barely hanging on. If you don't give them nothing, they ain't going to come no way. So that you you know you ain't get no help from them 
Uh, can he go to the scribes or Pharisees? Well, they so religious and so holy until they ain't going to help him because they're going to talk about how bad his situation is. You know, you got some people, amen, that's saved and act like they've been saved all their life and can't remember that they too have done some bad things in their life. So he can't go to the religious people. He can't go to the scribes. Uh, he can't go to the Pharisees. He can't go to this group that think they are so holy that they can't touch anybody unclean. And so he comes to the disciples and these are the, the, the church leaders. Help me Lord. The, the, these are people in position. The ones who are placed in a condition and play to be able to help but they could not help him. He go to the motherboard. They couldn't help him. He come to the elders. They couldn't help him. He came to the pastor. He couldn't help him. Came to the, to the elders and the evangelists and missionaries. They couldn't help him. Came to the deacons. They couldn't help him. Went to the urchins. They couldn't help him. And he's now in a situation where he can't go back home. I wish I had a witness here. I, 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 I can't go back the same way I came. I, 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 can't, I didn't come to church to go back the same way I came. Because if I came to go to church and go back the same way I came, I could have stayed at the house. What, what no need of me even getting up out the bed to come out to church and then leave the same way I came. I need some help. And he realized that the only one that could help him was Jesus. The good news is Jesus comes out of the transfiguration, worked his way back down the mountain and sees this multitude gathered there and the disciples debating on how they could help this man. Even though they couldn't do it, there was now an open debate about somebody else's problem. Can I preach up in here today? Isn't it funny how other folk can tell you how what you need to do with your problem and how they would handle it if they were you and what you need to do to fix your mess and fix your dilemma but they don't realize their own mess is bigger than yours. God deliver us from all these experts in other people's matters. God deliver us from folk that can tell you what to do and they can't even do it themselves. God deliver us from all of these people that have everybody answer but their own. They can tell you how to raise your child but they lost control of theirs a long time ago. They can tell you how your marriage is supposed to work and theirs falling apart right in front of them. They can tell you how to live safe and they ain't living safe themselves. Isn't it amazing that you got these experts everywhere that know what's best for you but you don't know like I know what I'm dealing with in my own life. I wish you'd tell somebody stay out of my business. I know you want to help me, but the best way you can help me is to stay out of my business. It takes six months for you to mind yours and leave mine alone. Amen. You ain't smart enough to deal with my stuff. If you was in my shoes, you'd have lost your mind. You'd have been in Whitfield somewhere by now. Baby, you don't even know it. Just because you think you know what's going on don't mean that you do know what's going on. That's why it's best for you to stay in your own lane I feel like preaching up in this place today am I doing all right church it's been a long time give me a minute here and so the idea here is that he's leading some help and he can't leave you see now I remember back in the day Ella John when church service was over we used to just hang around because we still needed whatever was left in the residue they would call it the residue blessing that you just hang around Around. God may just pull out something while you sit in the church. I've seen people get filled with the Holy Ghost out 
the church service was over. I've seen people slain in the spirit after the pastor had left, after the janitor was sweeping up and the Holy Ghost showed up in the room and fell in that place. You see, there's a blessing in the benediction. So often we're in a hurry to get out of here. We'll tear up our vehicle trying to get off the church parking lot. But you don't know your blessing could have been lingering in the atmosphere waiting on you to say hallelujah one more time. Waiting on you to say thank you Jesus one more time. You could be three amens away from your miracle while you trying to break loose out of here. If I were you I would tell God thank you right now. Whatever it takes I got to get my miracle. Oh I feel like preaching up in here today. This man said I'm not going anywhere. I came to see Jesus. I tried y'all church folk and y'all couldn't help me. I tried the religious people. You couldn't help me. I tried the multitude and y'all a bunch of naysayers. I need to see Jesus. I wish I had a witness in here. I wish I had somebody that came to church this morning that said I need to see Jesus. I'm glad to see you Pastor Harvey but I ain't here because of you. You may die tonight. I came to see Jesus. I came all the way down here. I love you Pilgrim Rest, but I came to see Jesus because all of my help good God Almighty I wish to tell somebody all my help come from the Lord. I'm going to my seat. This man said, y'all sit down here. I'm going here. He said, look and look here now. Sister Mary and I came to see Jesus. He said, I, I didn't come for no mess. I didn't come to get caught up in the hearsay that he say, she say and who look pretty. You got the prize today. God bless you. You're looking good. Thank God we give you a ribbon. But I ain't here for you. Oh, you don't hear me here. I thank God for each of you but baby it ain't even about you it ain't even about me it's about that man that hung on that cross and died for my sin but early good God about it oh shout out to say good God about it let me get back to this Elkanah and while in this text while the man came to see Jesus uh, the problem broke loose on him you know sometime you know most of the time when you have a real issue uh, with your car you take it to the mechanic uh, it don't show out in front of the mechanic uh, even the check engine light uh, it'll go off and you're like nah I know I ain't crazy that, that thing was just on I promise you I promise you it was it was showing out it was it was making funny noise it wasn't acting right it was driving funny and the mechanic looking oh well it ain't doing it now but I promise you if you leave out of here it's gonna show out again if I ain't gotta go far let just ride with me down the street it's gonna do it again but for some reason when the mechanic is there the car don't show out but in this case this devil got busy right in front of Jesus and look at somebody say ooh Oops, he made a mistake. You see, when you get in the presence of the Lord and you try to show out, you don't know who you're messing with. I see God do some miraculous things. I see God send the devil on the run. I see God make folk that said no turn around and say, I wish I had some help in here. I'm closing, I'm closing. And here we are now. The man still has the issue and he's having a conversation with Jesus. And in this conversation, I'm starting to feel the Holy Ghost here. Hallelujah to the Lamb. The problem is not the child. Ain't the Lord all right? Because if the problem was the child, then Jesus could have quickly went ahead and dealt with it. But the problem wasn't the child. The real problem was with the man. And Jesus asked the man, if you can believe, 
all things are possible. I want you to know, church, that you got to believe God when all hell break loose. You got to stand on the promise and said, though he slay me, yet will I trust him. I don't know how he gonna do it, but I'm gonna stand on his word. He may not come when you want him to come, but if you keep your hand in the wine and chain, he will make a way somehow. Is there a witness in this building that know that you know I tried him for myself and he made a way out of no way. I'm headed to my seat. It ought to be a witness in here that know that you know if you trust in the Lord and keep on leaning and depending on God that situation have got to get better and the man cried out Lord I believe you but help my unbelief Lord I'm close but I'm still too far away from my miracle God I need you to help me to deal with my unbelief ain't the Lord all right God told me to tell you it's getting better touch your neighbor and tell them neighbor I believe it's getting better I believe this situation is turning around I believe I'm not crazy I'm not insane but I believe that my miracle is in this service I believe my breakthrough is in this atmosphere if you believe it shout yeah shout yeah oh, y'all gonna make me preach is there anybody here that need a miracle reach up and grab it it's already here it's getting better yeah 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 I believe it everybody come on down to this altar come on brother Jerry somebody here need to know that your answers here somebody need to know that miracle is here somebody need to know that answer's here, right here. Somebody here needs a blessing. Somebody here oh, needs a blessing. I got to get out of here, church. Somebody here needs a blessing oh bless me come on lift your hand and tell him bless me right now somebody here hallelujah needs a miracle God I need you I need you right now somebody be here oh hallelujah needs a miracle somebody here needs a miracle Woo! oh bless me bless me right now <laughs> somebody here we're gonna pray in a minute needs a healing if you need healing lay your hand right there somebody 
be here. Lord, I need you to heal me. Need a healing. Somebody here. Need a healing. Oh, heal me. Hey, hey, hey. Heal me. Glory, glory, glory. Oh, heal me. Heal me. I had an so right now. Yes. 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 Come on, church. I can't hear you, church. Yeah, you ought to tell him. You ought to tell him. Yeah, yes. Let it come out of your heart. Yes. I am a Yeah. Hey, somebody just got it right there. Somebody just got it right there. Oh, hey. Woo. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Woo, you know, chain keys up. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Father in heaven, we thank you. Hallelujah. Better days are coming. Somebody just got it right here. This is the service they've been waiting on. The shift is already in the atmosphere. The miracle has been released. Those that have been holding out, waiting for that window to open. Lift up that cup right now, Lord. Say, fill me up, Lord. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Lord, I'm yours. Everything I have, everything I'm not. I'm yours, Lord. Fill us up, oh God. Do what only you can do. Help our unbelief. It's got to get better, Lord. We believe it. And we receive it. We stand on your word. We stand on your promise. We stand on what you said. We relieve the report of the Lord. We bind the enemy here today. They come to steal, kill, and destroy. Satan, we're taking back everything you have told. We're taking back everything you have taken. It's ours. We claim it here today. In the name of Jesus. You can't hold our miracle. You can't hold our blessings. In the name of Jesus. Just like this man sought Jesus. We're calling on your name, Lord. Oh, Jesus. Help us, oh God. Help our unbelief. Strengthen us where we're weak. Build us up where we've been torn down. In the name of Jesus. And do it for your glory. Do it for your name's sake. In this place. In this hour. We thank you now. We thank you now. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And thank God. Lord, thank you today. Go with us and stand by us. And meet us again. At the distant time. In Jesus' name. You're dismissed. Go with God. And he in his love and mercy will go with you. God bless you today.